Welcome to Loop TV. I'm Gene Munster. This is Apple's Far Out event recap. I gave myself 24 hours to let the significance of the announcements sink in and separately to get a sense about what other people were saying about it and put some of that into context. So I'm going to go through it and talk about the products. Second, talk about the surprises. And third, talk about putting it all together, what the key takeaways are. In terms of products, probably the most important new feature was satellite with iPhone 14. This is for emergency messaging purposes, and they mean it when they say emergency messaging. This is not something that you're ultimately going to be sending messages to your friends uh, through uh, satellite connectivity. Historically, it's been dedicated to phones that have these bulky antennas. And so this is the first form factor and a sleek form factor of any satellite connectivity besides like GPS. So from a messaging standpoint, this is an important technological step forward for Apple. Typically, they're just about a half a step behind in terms of initial announcements, but they usually do it better. But in this case, they are early and it begs the question, who's going to want this feature? And my sense is that a lot of people will, not just emergency workers or people who are in the back country. I think that all of us know times, even in urban areas, when our cell connection isn't quite what we want it to be or is out completely. And this is essentially just a safety net if things get in a tough spot. Obviously, the first thing that we reach for is our phone and gives a sense of security around it. They're going to give the first two years of the service away for free. My guess is after those two years, it's probably going to be like $30 a year. So why not? And it just kind of plays into one of Apple's tentpole themes, which is around security and safety and health and wellness and all that plays into this um, emergency messaging connectivity. So nice feature, doesn't move the needle for the iPhone growth, uh, not significantly, but it is an example of just one more reason to get an iPhone. It gives me some comfort that they will exceed the iPhone estimates over the next few quarters. The second announcement was related to the Watch Ultra. I was expecting something that I called the Watch Pro. I don't think that this is for these ultra runners and extreme climbers and scuba diving, even though it is better suited for that. I think Apple is uh, recognizing that there are certain buyers of Apple Watch, typically men in this case, who are just looking for something that stylistically is different. And he took a page out of Rolex's marketing here, and they uh, really played up kind of these extreme cases to make the everyday person uh, like myself feel like I'm uh, more than I'm, I am by having this watch. I was uh, intrigued by it. I think this thing is going to be a meaningful seller. I think it's going to have a great holiday. And I suspect that if you want this or want to give it as a gift for this holiday, you should order it soon. It's not cheap. It starts at about double the price of a typical uh, high-end Apple Watch, so it starts at $800. The surprises undoubtedly was the fact that they really didn't raise pricing. They bumped up fractionally the iPhone Pro Max, but for the most part, they left pricing unchanged across the board. I was expecting for half the products to get a, a, a measurable bump up. And I think in today's world, a maintaining of price is a price cut for consumers. I think Apple's playing this well. I think they're threading the needle when it comes to pricing. If they would have raised pricing, I think it would have caused me to be somewhat apprehensive about how the consumer is going to react in this environment to even more expensive phones. But given these products are essentially reaching necessity standpoint, I think that maintaining pricing is going to be a, a win for the iPhone. If you look back over the past year in the June 2021 quarter, their gross margin was 43% from uh, the following year. A cost went up, whether it's logistics, component costs, or salaries, and they maintain that same 43% margin. So this is one of the great things about Apple is just their excellence around uh, you know, supply chain and even in a, a still climbing cost environment, I think that they can still surprise investors on uh, the stability of their margins. And the last piece is just the takeaway. I've seen a lot of these events and at some point at some time hour and a half into it it, it feels like you have been in this uh, movie before and it can lull me into a sense that there is really nothing new nothing significant going on here but in fact there is i think a substantial amount that goes on every year all these may seem incremental but they are innovative i've been a long time believer in that but i always ask myself going into these events are they living up to 
uh, that invitation that consumers have of really delivering best in class consumer tech. Even though this may seem like an incremental event, it is going to be measurable. Looking for 5% revenue growth next year, I think that they will slightly exceed that. They can still garner a multiple, which I think should be at the top end of overall FANG. If you put it all together, still uh, left this event feeling optimistic that Apple is on track. On behalf of Loop TV, I'm Gene. Bye for now.